Welcome to day number four of our 40 days of power. And I trust God that these three days you have prayed and fasted has been beneficial to you. And now we are in the fourth day, seeking the face of the Lord, praying, fasting, and trusting him to come through for us. And the God of heaven will come through for each one of us and we will have a testimony at the end of the 40 days. Even before the 40 days are over, you will have a testimony. It's important as we seek the face of the Lord that we commit ourselves to holiness. It's one thing just separating from something that is wrong, but we have to also make an active commitment to do things that bring glory to God. And so we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Living a holy life is a commitment. And I know most of you would say, Pastor, a holy life is impossible. But you know, God will not tell us to do something if it's impossible to do it. If he says we can live a holy life, it means he has the grace, he has the ability to help us to live a holy life. And instead of saying, I cannot do it, it's important for us to say, I want God to help me to do it. And so as we fast and pray, we want to commit ourselves to holy living. And the reason why we are doing that at the passage is because God has given us promises. God's promises. When God says, I'm going to do something for you, I'm going to help you, I'm going to open a door for you, I'm going to touch you, I'm going to heal you. I'm, whatever promise God gives, based on the promise, he expects us to live a certain lifestyle. So because of the promises of God, we have to live a holy life because of the promises. If this a uh, moment you want to see the promises of God become real in your life. You can continue living haphazardly and, and sinning by heart and still believing that the promises of God will come true for you. Some people think that uh, a man of God's anointing is so strong that no matter how sinful their life is, it doesn't matter, God will still do it for them. God does not do things because of the prayer of a man of God. God does things because of his grace and of his mercy and of his promises. If he has promised he would do it, he would do it. If he says he wouldn't do it, nobody's prayer can make him do it. So because we have promises of God, we commit to living a holy life. And the passage says in doing that, we must perfect holiness in the fear of God. What does that mean? It means that living a holy life starts with fearing God having a respect for God, having a reverence for God, taking God seriously. So if you take God seriously and you respect him and you respect his word and you want to live in a way that does not bring offense to him and to his name and that his presence is important to you, then you can live a holy life. But if God is, means nothing to you, his word means nothing to you, uh, his presence means nothing to you, you can be in church and behave anyhow, you can be in a prayer meeting and behave anyhow, uh, people are, the prayer is going on and you're on your phone and you are uh, WhatsApping people whilst you're in a prayer meeting, then you don't reverence God. And if you don't reverence God, then you're going to, not going to commit to holiness, which is necessary for the promises of God to become real in your life. So during this time, be conscious of the presence of God. When you are in service, be aware, I'm in service. Turn off your phones. Uh, don't chat with people. Uh, you can do that after service, but not in the service. Honor God. And as we perfect holiness in the fear of God, his promises will become real in our lives. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, you have called me to a life of holiness. I separate myself from anything that defiles me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again tomorrow as we begin a new week. And Pastor Mesa Otabel, shalom, peace, and life to you.